Today, we are in Indiana on Lake Michigan and we are starting our Lake Michigan Circle Tour. And we're kicking it off here at the Indiana Dunes National Park. It just became a national park in 2019. There's beautiful Lake Michigan behind me. And also in this area are these homes of progress that were built for the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. They were built to showcase, you know, homes of tomorrow and new building materials. So they're still here. They're pretty cool. Really like this pink one behind me. We're starting here in Indiana. We're heading up through Michigan. We're going to head up to Mackinac Island. We're going to go to the Upper Peninsula. And then we're going to come back down on the other side through Wisconsin. But we're kicking it off here in Indiana at Indiana Dunes National Park. So the house of tomorrow is behind me. And it's actually under restoration was well, called America's first glass house. And I mean, the really cool thing about these four houses is they were all experimental for the World's Fair. And I think it's really cool that they're restoring it and uh, hopefully they get it done because it'd be to, fun to come back and visit it someday. Well, there's Lake Michigan behind me. Looking forward to driving all the way around this thing. It's more of an inland sea than it is a lake. Um, I'm gonna have to look up as to why it is actually a lake. But this is a good spot to start the tour and it's really unique, uh, the way that these houses sit on the lake. Today we are in Holland, Michigan at the Tulip Time Festival. There's several fields of beautiful tulips here. You can walk through them. Lots of amazing social media, Instagram opportunities right here at this festival. As you can see behind me, we have fields of tulips, and this here is the Dizwan Windmill. It was built in the 1960s. It came over from the Netherlands, and it's the only working Dutch windmill here in the United States. They actually do mill flour right here in this Dutch windmill in the middle of Michigan. All right, we're about to go up in the windmill. So I'm inside the windmill. It's really cool. You can walk up, there's a self-guided tour and you can read how the different parts of the windmill work because this is an active mill. Um, but if you can't come up, they actually do also have a video that runs on a continuous loop in a tent out on the grounds. So everything on the fourth floor of this building where we're standing came over from the Netherlands and everything below was built by Michiganders. So we're on Windmill Garden Island. That's where the Dizwan Windmill is. And there are fields of tulips everywhere. And actually in all the whole town of Holland, there are 5 million tulips. They have them everywhere. So it's not just here. They're all throughout the town. They definitely love their tulips up here in Holland, Michigan. So we're here on Windmill Island Gardens and behind me are all these cute little buildings 
and inside they have shops where you can get all of your souvenirs. They have wooden shoes, they have wooden tulips, they have uh, cute little figurines. And then there's another building over here that has a replica of the Netherlands built in miniature inside. It's actually really cool. It was really fun to walk through and uh, we might have to pick up a few souvenirs. Also, all over this festival, they actually sell the tulip bulbs. So you kind of walk around, you can see all the tulips are labeled and you can decide which ones you want. And then they have tents set up where you can go and purchase the bulbs and they ship them to you wherever you live. What are you doing? I don't know, point, you want to point at the windmill again? You're just standing You're pointing at the shoe? Do I sit in the shoe? It's better to sit because then you can see the shoe. I'm actually just filming it. <laughs> you love to do that to me. Yeah. So we have finished up in Holland with the Tulip Festival and we're going to continue heading up the coast of Lake Michigan and our next stop is going to bring us to Grand Haven. There are several pretty popular towns all up and down the coast of Lake Michigan here on the Michigan side and we're just going to hit as many of them as we can and just continue exploring. As you head north into Michigan, you don't exactly drive along the lakeshore. You really kind of drive through farm country and then you pop out into these towns and then you can get over to the lake from there. Um, so it's, very, it's a very Midwestern looking drive as we see a lot of cattle farms um, along the way. I am riding in the back seat of the car with Howie. see her but that's Evelyn that's our baby she's along for the ride this is her first trip out with us and um, I don't think we're gonna have her on camera too much cuz she really doesn't have much to say just yet maybe someday Our Michigan circle tour continues and that's brought us to Grand Haven and we're here at Oddside Ales just enjoying a few beers after hanging out in the hot sun at the Tulip Festival. One cool thing about this building is that there's actually an old piano factory. So I love when we can find a brewery that has a really distinct location like that. So that's what brought us in here today. This beer right here is called Beer Me a Lime, which I just think is a little nod to Andy Bernard. So, beer me this beer. It gets a laugh like 30% of the time. We're right on Main Street. It's a very hot day and we thought, let's go grab a couple beers and this looks like the perfect spot to do it. I got an amber beer, as per usual, and Very good. They have a big selection of beer here that make them all in-house and uh, it's a good little stop. This is a really nice spot. It's a really cute downtown area here in Grand Haven and I'm excited to keep exploring it.
one of the great parts about the west coast of Michigan is all these little towns up and down the shore on Lake Michigan have these great main streets, they're nice little towns, and they have these really awesome places to eat. And we got to Grand Haven, one of the first things I noticed was there's two sandwich shops a block from each other, which means we're gonna be eating at two sandwich shops here in Grand Haven. So the first sandwich shop that we stopped at here in Grand Haven is Electric Hero, and they had a sandwich named after Dwight Schrute. The sandwich is named, it's worth at least 15 Schrute bucks. It only costs 10 American dollars, which I think in Stanley Nichols is a pretty good conversion ratio, but I had to get the Dwight Schrute sandwich here. So this is sandwich shop number one, and we're gonna go try sandwich shop number two after we eat this Dwight Schrute sandwich. Well, here it is. It's worth at least 15 Schrute bucks, and we have figured out what's on it. We got cheddar cheese, jalapeno, pineapple, barbecue sauce, pulled pork, red onions. All toasted on delicious, delicious bread. I don't even, I don't think Dwight would eat pineapple on a sandwich, but it looks good. I do feel like I got good value for my money, like real American dollar money. Uh, very good pulled pork on that. Uh, I actually like the pineapples on there, and uh, that's just a that's just a lot of flavor. Barbecue sauce, cheddar cheese, good bread. I'm liking this little Grand Haven sandwich broth. I can tell you that. So across the street, we had an office-themed beer. Literally right there. Really, literally right behind us. And here we're having an office-themed sandwich. So it seems like Grand Haven is just full of office fans, <laughs> including us. So we're gonna try and eat as many, eat and drink as many office-themed things as we can in this area. So we'll see what happens with the next sandwich shop. But I'm I will fall it. over if they have an office-themed sandwich. I'm going to dig into this sandwich that's full of goodness and falling apart. Mm. Oh, that's very good. The bread is very good. It's very crunchy. And the pulled pork is delicious. It's packed. Packed with ingredients. Mm. This is uh, just a nice little sandwich shop here in Grand Haven. Electric Hero Sandwich Shop has totally hit the spot as our first sandwich shop. Now we're on to sandwich shop number two. We're grabbing a sandwich at the Toasted Pickle. It's a sandwich shop right on Main Street. It opened in 2016, and the owners wanted to bring back that classic sandwich spot to this Grand Haven area. And we ordered a specialty sandwich called the June Bug. All right, sandwich number two. So this sandwich is basically an ultimate grilled cheese. It's got um, cheddar cheese, provolone cheese, pimento cheese, bacon, and tomato. We even have tomato soup. Well, let's go ahead and dig in. It's a hot sandwich and uh, it's not getting any warmer. So look at that. You can just see the pimento wow. cheese on there. So I mean, like cheese. I said, this is like the ultimate grilled cheese. I mean, look at that bacon. So. Cheers. Even the tomato looks good. I know. And dipping it right now, the tomato. And it is kind of hot today, but I mean, a grilled cheese kind of does cut that line between like a cold sandwich and a summer sandwich. So. So that sandwich does not lack for flavor. I mean, like I said, that pimento cheese comes through um, and it just is, that's about as good as a grilled cheese sandwich as you're gonna find anywhere. When you see your food dripping, it's usually dripping with flavor. We broke the office themed 
treats here with this June bug sandwich, but uh, worth it. Going all in here for a dunk. Mm. Like Adam said, there is tons of flavor on this sandwich. And like, we're pretty obsessed with pimento cheese, so we kind of had to get this sandwich. The bacon is super crispy, the bread is super crispy, and the cheese just brings it all together. I, uh, toasted pickle, they make a mean sandwich. So we're gonna keep rolling here on our uh, Lake Michigan tour. We're gonna keep heading north, and uh, I think we have some fun activities planned for the rest of the day. We're ending our day here in Traverse City with a little bit of ice cream at Milk and Honey Creamery. This is kind of Cold Stone style where they have ice cream and then they mix a bunch of toppings in. And Madeline loves peanut butter, so she got Moose Tracks, which has Reese's and other peanut butter and other chocolate, so it's like Reese's on steroids. And of course it looks the most tasty. So I'm gonna try it first. She's gonna like that. I got salted caramel, which has caramel and Himalayan sea salt, and big truck just threw it by. Salted caramel with Himalayan sea salt. That's definitely a homemade caramel. It's very sweet, and you can definitely taste the sea salt. That's pretty good. It doesn't really look like much because it's the caramel is not as golden as normal. Well, this is very rich. Good little spot. All right, wow, this is, this is some beautiful ice cream right here. Wow, that is very peanut buttery. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. Mm, mm -mm. Wow, the ice cream is really fresh and there's just like bits of peanut butter and there's chocolate. Wow. It's a great way to end of the day. So milk and honey, they use local and natural flavors and it really comes through because this ice cream is just, it is just so, so good. Mm. You can tell that they really care about the product they're making here because it's just so, so good. Well, a fun first day here in the state of Michigan on this Michigan Circle Tour. We enjoyed all the stops we did. It's really a great road trip here in the United States and uh, we're looking forward to exploring more on this Circle Tour. We are here on Mackinac Island. We've never been here before and we're really looking forward to taking in all the sights. There it is. That's where we're going today, all the way down here. Over there, it's a big old bridge. Well, we're now about to board the ferry, and yesterday it was scorching hot. A few hours up the coast, we have the long sleeves back on, but we were ready to go over to the island, and the ferry operation here, it's quite the operation. On the ferry to Mackinac Island. How he is very much enjoying the
just got off the ferry. We are on Mackinac Island. This is our this is a fun boat ride. Fun boat ride. Only took about 11 minutes. And uh, this is our first time here. So we're pretty excited to explore. The boat ride took 16 minutes, not 11 minutes. I was wrong, but it was very enjoyable and very quick. Well, we're staying at the Mission Point Resort. We just dropped off Howie, actually. <laughs> they have dog sitting, so we're without him for a couple of hours. And now we're gonna go explore, head over to the Grand Hotel, and um, really get into it. It's out our here only Mackinac. shot to go to the Grand Hotel because they don't allow dogs. Big surprise, the Grand Hotel doesn't they allow don't dogs. Want Howie is a guest, he's not grand enough. <laughs> so he is, Hang out with the dog sitter for a few hours while we explore the island. So far, I've noticed that Mackinac Island smells like fudge. I think Adam said there's like 13 fudge shops on this main drag right here. So we're gonna do a little fudge tour later on, but the air smells like chocolate. First impressions of Mackinac Island. First of all, it feels like we've stepped back in time. That kind of goes without saying. Uh, no cars, just bicycles and horses, horse taxis. Um, also kind of getting some Key West vibes just because of that old time you feel. And uh, I think this would be a great place to bring a group for a trip. It's a lot of cute things to do over here. We're catching our first glimpses of the Grand Hotels. We're walking up here. It's pretty grand. Sets high up on the hill. I'm sure it has amazing views of the water. Yeah, it's like uh, stepping into that movie somewhere in time. My mom loved that movie when I was a kid. So that's like my only reference for Mackinac Island. So I'm excited to be here. The view from the porch here is absolutely incredible. Just sitting here on the porch of the Grand Hotel in a rocking chair, taking in the views. Things just seem a little slower paced here on Mackinac Island, and that's the way we like it. Right behind me is the Grand Hotel restaurant. You sit here with the big windows that look out over onto the grounds and onto the water. It's uh, actually closed right now for a private event. So that is kind of a shame because we wanted to have lunch here today. The lobby here is really cool. It's all, it's all red and green, which is kind of Christmassy, but it's really pretty, really classic. There's a $10 fee to come in if you just wanna look on the grounds. Also, if you have reservations at the restaurant, that gets you into the hotel as well. It's just so cool here. I could spend a whole day just exploring or just really hanging out in their lobby. It just really does feel like another world. So here, we have a room to make phone calling. 
This is a landline. <laughs> Love this out here. There's a whole bank of rooms here to make a phone call just in case you want a little privacy. And we're here at Sadie's, which is the ice cream shop at the Grand Hotel. I can't think of a much better spot to sit and uh, get summer started with some delicious ice cream. We got Mackinac Island peanut butter fudge. Madeline loves peanut butter ice cream and fudge is kind of a staple here on the island. So we're going for it. Mm. There are huge chunks of fudge in there. This is real. You can see the peanut butter. Look at all that flavor right there. You get the horse carriages going by. Obviously there's no cars on the island, so it's just a real peaceful setting. We just keep saying that we've felt like we've stepped back in time here on Mackinac Island. And eating ice cream here, the Grand Hotel, certainly is fulfilling that. Now we're gonna keep exploring here on Mackinac Island. Here grabbing lunch at the Pink Pony. It's the start of our Mackinac Island food tour. There's gonna be a lot of sweets on this food tour because there's a bunch of fudge shops here, although three of the fudge shops have the same name and some other ones, so we gotta figure out how many different fudge shops there actually are. But we're starting here for lunch at the Pink Pony and we're starting off with white fish dip. It's a really popular item here on the island. The white fish comes right here from Lake Michigan. And then I also got a white fish sandwich for lunch because we're on an island, I'm eating fish. Natalie got a prime rib sandwich and I think I'm gonna be jealous of what she wanted. Really good. You can taste the smokiness from the fish. It's got like paprika on the top of it. It's really creamy, really smoky. Let's see why that's a favorite. Oh, it's really, you can see the steam coming up. That is delicious. It's very creamy, smoky. The horseradish on there. There's some horseradish here. Put it on the side. And overpower everything. This gives it a little kick. Very good. All right, this is my breaded whitefish sandwich. This is massive. I mean, look at how big this thing is. We've got lettuce, tomato, you see the white fish. Added the, oh, we got a chip in there. Added the tartar sauce. That is fresh out of the fryer, beer battered. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be a very, very big bite, so. You can see why it's called white fish. Look in there, you got the, that white fish. Tartar sauce is really good, the bun's really good. Squeeze a little lemon on there. Go back from round two. So Adam went with surf, I went with turf. Here is my prime rib French dip sandwich. So here we go. Dip it. Beef is really good. It's a ton of cheese. And the bread is toasted really well. It's nice and crispy. And that juice just kicks it up a notch. It's a good sandwich.
Digging into the white fish. There's tartar sauce on my head. Well, I absolutely love French dip sandwiches. We actually had a little extra horseradish from the uh, dip. So we're gonna go ahead and just open this thing up and just put a little horseradish. It's actually a lot of horseradish right on it. Big dip. Let it soak. One, two. When it's dripping, that means there's flavor. With that view, it's a pretty enjoyable sandwich right now. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that massive whitefish sandwich here at the Pink Pony. It's a good way to start our trip here on Mackinac Island, and uh, it's going to keep me fueled for the rest of the day. We're staying at the Mission Point Resort, and this is the view of the water. It's very peaceful. It's really beautiful here. The first stop on the Mackinac Island Fudge Tour is Kilwimps. Now, other than knowing there's a bunch of fudge shops here, I didn't do any research as to who's got the best, so we're pretty much unbiased. But this really isn't going to be a comparison because we're gonna try different flavors. We started with a flavor that's not that strange. That's chocolate sea salt caramel. It's pretty actually a safe. huge chunk. Oof. Yeah, $11 for a huge chunk of fudge. 11 bucks for a huge chunk of fudge. So and that is kind of... Uh, I'm sure it's competitive I'm pricing. I'm not going to spend 12 bucks at each of the 13. That's a lot of money on fudge. So. All right. Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think it's homemade caramel. Oh yeah. And uh, it's really rich. I mean, the fudge is rich, but the caramel, on, like a huge chunks of caramel in there. You can see that. So, Pilwins. I have to let Madeline have a bite here. Well, we're off to a good start. Let's go with a safe. I went with a safe bet on the uh, the first try here. They had some other different flavors, but I thought first one, we'll just go classic chocolate sea salt caramel. Mm. Oh yeah, that's rich. This, this block of fudge could last us like a month. <laughs> I think some people are going to be getting gifts when we get home. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to we're not gonna we're not gonna eat it all. We're not gonna waste it. But I don't think we're gonna eat it all. But wow, this is this is really good. I have to assume that these fudge shops are slightly competitive with each other. There's so many. Um, I'm excited to keep trying more. They didn't just have fudge inside. They had a whole bunch of other treats. They Humble all have Apple. a bunch of treats. I think they all have well, yeah, they all have a bunch of treats. A bunch of chocolate shops all up and down. So we started here with dessert. Now we're gonna head over and grab some dinner. We're here at the Kingston Kitchen in Mackinac Island, and it's got a really cool story. The chef grew up in Kingston, Jamaica, and learned all these Jamaican dishes from his mom. 
and he got his culinary start here on Mackinac Island, and now he's here and he's opened up his own restaurant, which is Kingston Kitchen. So tonight we're getting a Jamaican dish, which is jerk chicken. We're also getting a Michigan dish, which is uh, baked whitefish. We're looking forward to both of those dishes coming out because I've seen the food coming out and it looks really good. The food has come out, it looks beautiful. Madeline got her dish and said, I think it's the most beautiful plate of food I've ever seen. And it's definitely a lot of fun. It's got a bunch of bright colors and looks delicious. The jerk chicken here smells amazing. I always say if your food smells good, you're in for a treat. I mean, come on, your food should smell good. This jerk chicken, look at that. Got a jerk sauce on top of it. We have plantains, we have rice and beans here. That jerk chicken is so good. It's uh, it's really tender. And that jerk sauce has really good flavor on it, and uh, you combine it with the rice and beans. And I forgot about the plantain. Sleep on the plantain. Never sleep on the plantains. Absolutely love plantains. Look at that. We may not be in Jamaica, but we're on an island, and the food here, I haven't been to Jamaica yet, but it's gotta be pretty close to the real thing. This really is an absolutely gorgeous plate of food with these potatoes all around, these rainbow vegetables. I don't really know where to start. Um, I'm gonna take this lemon, squeeze a little lemon on there. Wow, okay. Let's get a little bit of everything in this bite. Oh, wow. No she in it. Okay, we're gonna get some fish, some potatoes, veggies. Mm. Oh wow. It's a delicious like lemon butter. I think it's a champagne sauce. We've got capers and garlic. <laughs> wow. That is so good. It tastes as good as it looks. I am very happy with what I ordered. Mm. Wow. Mm. Just like cloves of garlic. Mm. Wow. I am thoroughly impressed with this meal right now. All right, here I go. I'm trying Madeline's beautiful dish. Got that white fish right here from local waters. See the garlic, capers, lemon. This is so fresh. Just clean fish, the caper, lemon, garlic, beautiful. That's gonna be one of the best bites we have all year. Guarantee you. Mm. Yeah, you just want to take a clove of garlic and just eat it. I've eaten like three. <laughs> That'll be fun. Going in on the jerk chicken. I really just want this plantain. The minute it came out, it's like, I want a bite of that. Chicken, some rice. Oh my gosh, this is. The sweetness from the plantain balances out the heat from the jerk chicken. This dish is just full of flavor. Well, it's gonna be hard to top that meal here on Mackinac Island, but we're gonna keep trying. So we'll see what Mackinac Island has in store for us tomorrow. We are ending our day here on Mackinac Island with a few beers here back at our resort. It's been a good day.
All right, we are here on the eastern side of Mackinac Island, and we're gonna go over to Arch Rock. It's on what we call maybe the back side of the island, away from where Main Street is and the population and the hotels, and there's a bunch of bikes flying up and down the highway here. Of course, the highway is a highway without any cars, so it's a bike highway. But it's a beautiful morning. The water here is absolutely gorgeous. It's teal blue, like something you'd find in the Caribbean. The nice part about Mackinac Island is you really feel like you're not in the Midwest, which usually doesn't have a lot of scenic places, which we enjoy scenic places, and that's the one drawback of the Midwest. All right, beginning the ascent up to Arch Rock. Right now I'm hiking up 207 steps to the Arch Rock. Pretty good view. The watercolor is amazing. Well, I'm up here at the top of Arch Rock. You can see down the coast of Mackinac Island. You would not believe that this is the Midwest if I told you, but it is. It's in Michigan. Might be the most scenic spot in the entire Midwest. I love the old timiness of Mackinac Island. They have some really cool churches and uh, feels like you're in New England. One of the things I learned about Mackinac Island since I've been here that's kind of cool is that there's 400 to 500 people who live here year round. There's a school, emergency services, they have everything that's needed to run a city, well, except for cars, but you don't actually need those. The deliveries are made by horse. And uh, I believe that emergency services does have vehicles that can get people um, on and off, or can get people around the island quickly. Um, they do have healthcare here. But the people who live here year round, um, they have to go over to the mainland, they do um, big time shopping, and then they come back. In the winter, you can imagine it gets pretty cold up here, in the northern part of Michigan. And there actually is an ice bridge that forms from here over to mainland Michigan. That ice bridge is how they moved Fort Mackinac from where Mackinac City is to where it is now on the island. And they said moved. I'm assuming that they just kind of rebuilt the fort over a long period of time. So if you're really astute, you may have noticed that Mackinac City and Mackinac Island are spelled differently. One ha Mackinac City has a W at the end of their spelling and Mackinac Island has a C at the end of their spelling. Now, from what I can find, the reason for that is because the city a long time ago wanted to distinguish itself from the island. And there's both British and French historical influence in the area. And I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the word that Mackinac is derived from, but I didn't really know that until I got up here. I never that paid that close attention to the fact that they were spelled differently. And when I got here and saw the water tower, I was like, that's not how they spell it on the island. So that's a little story that I can find. If you know better, leave a comment below. If you are bad, you can still get in trouble on Mackinac Island. That's the word I was talking about. See, Mackinac, Michelili Mackinac. We are here at the Gatehouse restaurant. It's right at the entrance of the Grand Hotel. And it's kind of a pub meets outdoor patio type restaurant. They've got 
pretty classic pub fare, and we got a Lake Perch po' boy and a Uper burger. Now, Uper is a term to refer to people from the Upper Peninsula. We're not quite there. Of course, we're not on the Lower Peninsula either. We're on an island, in Mackinac Island, but we're gonna be heading to the Upper Peninsula soon. Now, in the Great Lakes states, anytime I can find uh, perch or uh, walleye or whitefish, I always try and get it. Here on this Lake Perch po' boy, we've got obviously the perch, We've got a rumelade, um, coleslaw, tomato. I'm very hungry, so we're just gonna go straight in. Mm. One of the things that's really good is their bread. Um, don't tell the folks from New Orleans this, but sometimes a po' boy's bread can be way too hard and crusty. This is actually a soft bread, and you can really taste the rumelade on there. I like this version of a po' boy. I've got their Uber burger. We have Gouda cheese, caramelized onions, bacon, and then the classic pickle, lettuce, tomato. It's a good burger. There's a ton of Gouda cheese on here. It's really good. The bacon's like chopped up small. So you're getting bacon in every bite. The pickles, tomato, really fresh. We're not eating at the Grand Hotel, but this kind of feels like we are. Yeah, I'm sure they serve loaded burgers over there. It's pretty grand. They should. <laughs> so the fries they have with this burger, they're like really thin, almost like little wedges. These are really good. Classic Midwest here. We got a bat of ranch, so. Mm. So I'm gonna try this burger. I always love it when a burger looks beautiful. This one definitely did. And Gouda, never sleep on Gouda. It's like the most underrated cheese there is. Just going right in the middle here. Mmm. Well, no streets, nope. No cars on the island to get to this place, but you know what? It's worth it. It's worth the boat trip. It's worth walking over here. It's a good burger. We just finished up at the Gatehouse restaurant here, right outside of the Grand Hotel. Everything here was absolutely delicious. Can't wait to get back out and explore a little bit more of this island. We had to refuel here with a little coffee from the Lucky Bean. Howie, look, it's a bark chapel. Not the same kind of bark though. Well, here's a view of Mackinac Island from Fort Mackinac. You're up high, love the city. Keep a lookout here in Fort Mackinac. I did read that Fort Mackinac had little military importance, but they continued to maintain it for many years. It's a pretty impressive operation here. Over on this main lawn here, they have pictures of what it looked like back when it was in use. So you can kind of get a feel of what it was like back in the 1800s. They also do demonstrations and walking tours and they have people dressed up in old timey military garb, which just adds a little extra flair to the experience. There's the tea room in 1925, almost 100 years.
So right now we're walking through the officer's quarters and they're actually pretty nice. I mean, it doesn't seem like uh, too bad of a spot to hang out. You have great views and it's not like there was much going on on the military front. So you just got it taken care of in these nice little houses. It said they had very active social lives. Behind me is the governor's summer mansion. This is for the use of all of Michigan's governors when they are in office. I said to Madeline, I think that I would spend my entire summer here. I probably wouldn't get reelected, but that's okay. I think it would be worth it. So the uh, house is pretty cool. Um, it doesn't look like there's anyone home right now. America's oldest grocery store. So we're about to try our second fudge shop here on Main Street, and that is Murdick's Fudge. Adam just popped inside to pick something out. Let's see what he came up with. Here we are. Fudge stop number two, Murdick's Fudge. Ooh. All real butter, all real cream. Wrapped Look at how up. nicely wrapped that is. Wrapped we got butter pecans. Ooh. I don't know if we found any wild flavors. You know, Michigan's a cherry capital and see if one of them has a cherry fudge somewhere. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This would be a great present. They ship nationwide. I don't work for them. All right, butter pecan. So you can definitely taste the butter. <laughs> in some ways, it's almost like eating a stick of butter. Pecans in it. Here, watch try it. Fudge is just a big old hunk of butter and sugar, isn't it? But when in Rome. Rome of fudge. <laughs> when you're in the Rome of fudge. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I feel like fudge is really hard to make at home. Um, but they uh, they definitely have it down to a science here on Mackinac Island. On to the next fudge stop. Caramel pretzel, chocolate chip cookie dough. So let's try those. Yeah. Salted caramel pretzel, chocolate chip cookie dough. That sounds good. Murray's giving out the samples. <laughs> so this is the pretzel. And you want the, the cookie dough. Mmm. I like the pretzel in there. The cookie dough. Thank you. Ooh. That looks just like ice cream. <laughs> but in fudge form. Cookie dough fudge is good. Oh, that's really good. Wow. I don't know how much I could eat in one sitting. That is delicious though. So. All right, let me try it. That's a winner. Chocolate chip cookie dough. Madeline seemed to really like this one. That's good. Mm, it is good. Very good. You might have to come back and get that one.
Okay, we're here at our next fudge stop. Riba's Fudge Shops. There's like five of them up and down the street, so. Actually three. Okay, there's three of them. You can see another one right there. From wherever you are, you can see the other one. So there's three up and down Main Street here. You get here. lost in Mackinac Island, you Riba's as a North Star. There's, there's, you know, pretty much Fudge Shop every two feet. This is Pistachio Pecan. It is a beautiful green. Look at that. Wow. We're gonna like have to roll out of here with all this fudge. Is there a knife in here? Should be. There's not going to grab one. There isn't. Should we just go in? Just break off these that Kit Kat bar. All right. We're just gonna bust some off of here. Ooh. All right. Pistachio pecan? Ooh. I like this one a lot. Takes a minute for the pistachio flavor to hit you, but it was really, it was really good. Mm. Mm. It's a little bit different. It's not a crazy flavor, but um, we're a big fan of pistachio. Joanne's fudge. So I think with this, we've hit up the major, all the major fudge shops on Main Street. I can't open it because it is taped shut. Oh, here we go. Also, it smelled amazing. They were making it fresh. So with this piece of fudge, I think we've hit up all the major fudge stops along Main Street here. There's Sanders right across the street. There is Sanders. Oh no, we like really wrapped this up tight. Okay. Here we go. This is Cookie Crunch. Looks like it has Oreos inside a chocolate fudge. So here we go. There's something really satisfying about cutting into a piece of fudge. Ooh, all right. You can see lots of cookie pieces in there. Mm. Wow. We haven't had a bad piece of fudge on this little crawl here. This is very delicious. Mm. All right, let's Chocolatey, get... big cookie bits. <laughs> and they're making it right there. And there's the smell of fudge yeah, all along the street here. It's <laughs> amazing. Poop. Yeah, Two kinds I mean, of fudge. there's fudge and then there's horse poop, but the fudge smell, the chocolatey fudge smell definitely helps mask the horse poop. Not complaining, not complaining about the horse poop. It's part of the experience. All right, cookie crunch. Madeline says Oreos inside. Mm. It's like cookies and cream, but with chocolate fudge. I think that's the fudgiest fudge we've had so far. Ironically, they've all been different. Is that ironic? I don't it's think not so. ironic. I think that's good. They're yeah. all a little different. So try them all. What was your favorite? I mean, if I say the favorite, then everyone will know what my favorite was. <laughs> Fudge-wise, I actually really liked the butter pecan, like mm. the actual fudge, like you could tell. Yeah. But see, it's hard to compare because we're doing different flavors. Very true. So, but they've all been good. They all get eaten. So, my favorite is whichever one I'm eating at the moment. That is spoken like a true politician. We have finished up here on Main Street with our food tour and our fudge crawl. Wow, I don't think you're gonna go wrong with any of the spots that we hit up today. Every single piece of fudge was delicious. We have a lot that we're bringing home with us. We are all done here in Mackinac Island. We are heading over to the ferry to head back to the mainland.
We are back on the Lake Michigan Circle Tour after leaving Mackinac Island. We just went over Mackinac Bridge, which splits the difference between Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. So technically, Mackinac Island is not on the Lake Michigan Circle Tour, but you can't get around Lake Michigan with basically driving past Mackinac Island. So we're counting it, but uh, we're now on the Upper Peninsula and we're actually gonna leave Lake Michigan again and go to the north side of the Upper Peninsula to see the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. It's one of the most beautiful spots in the Midwest. I've always wanted to go and never have. And so that is our current destination. Our friend Lake Michigan will continue to pop in all throughout the lake tour. So if you're looking for a true stick to Lake Michigan circle tour, this may not be the one for you, but, but we're doing a circle around Lake Michigan and that's just part of it. Right now we're driving along the coast of Lake Michigan up here in the Upper Peninsula and it's just absolutely beautiful. This is not an area that we're very familiar with. We've spent just a teeny amount of time up here before so it's been really fun so far to get up here and do this drive and just see how absolutely gorgeous it is. You kind of forget where you are because it really doesn't feel like Michigan. <laughs> It really doesn't feel like the Midwest at all. Being from Chicago, we do spend a lot of time on Lake Michigan, but being up here, you really can tell how absolutely massive the lake is. You kind of forget that when you're in the city and you're just hanging out at the beach, that once you get up here, it's just like, there's this national forest up here and it's just pretty incredible. This right here is the Miner's Castle. This is one of the most popular spots to come and view the pictured rocks. Why are they called the pictured rocks? Because the sandstone has multiple colors. So you can see right there, different colors of stone. Um, but this is the third lake we have seen today. So we saw Lake Michigan, we saw Lake Huron, now behind me is Lake Superior. This is the first time that we've actually, either of us has seen Lake Superior. So crossing that off the list today. I mean, it's just massive. Kind of forget how great the Great Lakes are until you get up here and you're like, oh, can't see anything across the way. But what I love about this area, first of all, it's absolutely gorgeous, but I love the color of the water. It's so like, it, it changes colors. It's, green, it's blue, and then against the different colored rocks. This is just, it's a very scenic area. And I'm glad we're up here because we've been talking about coming up here for a long time. Really being from Chicago, being from the Midwest, it's not that crazy of a drive to get up here and to experience all this. I did read that the best way to see the pictured rocks is actually down from the water. Unfortunately, that is not in the cards today. So we're just gonna have to settle for a view from up above. So now we are on the west side of Lake Michigan, still in Michigan, but heading down towards Wisconsin. Now, as we head down through Wisconsin, we're planning on making stops off in Green Bay and Milwaukee as we head back towards Chicago.
We're starting our day in Escanaba, Michigan, and our first meal is kind of a British tradition that's made its way to the Upper Peninsula. It's pasties. And pasties are basically calzones with a bunch of other delicious toppings inside like beef and potatoes and cheese and other vegetables. So we got two pasties right here. We got a ham and cheese pasty, and the most popular, the more traditional one, the beef one. This is the beef one. It's big. They say they're like a half pound, so, so they're definitely heavy. We're just gonna do this. Look at that. Stuffed with potatoes. They use lean beef, carrots. I think there's rutabaga in there as well. So first bite of pasty here on the Upper Peninsula. That is stick to your bones, down home flavor right there. So this place has been here since the 1970s. Adam said they have six different kinds of pasties. They have a pizza one, they have a chicken one, but um, this beef looks delicious. Wow, it really is a whole meal right here packed into this crust. It's ultimate comfort food. This one here is the ham and cheese. I have a feeling this one's gonna be really good. This one is just busting out with flavor. It's hot and these things are packed with filling. Okay. This is really good. It kind of is like a Hot Pocket. The pastry is really, really good and the filling is delicious. I would eat this for breakfast. All right, ham and cheese pasty. Wow, that looks really good. Woo! That's awesome. We're still on our circle tour. We're just outside of Green Bay at the Anape Brewery. I've got a Hail Mary Hells right here. They know how to do beer up here in Wisconsin. We're never disappointed when we stop in at a brewery when we're up in this state. It's a beautiful day, nice little patio, nice beers. Anape makes all their beers in house and um, they have kind of a garage theme. So it started in a garage with two doors. And so here on their new brewery, they've got a garage with two doors and they've got a really nice facility, really easy off the highway, just north of Green Bay. And uh, really tasty beers too. You can't stay in business in Wisconsin if you're a craft beer place and not have good beer. That's just, it's like a rule. One of the cool things about Anna P. Brewery is they're right next to a restaurant called 888 Cheese & Co. And they have grilled cheese, cheese curds, and other sandwiches. They'll bring it right over to the brewery. So the brewery doesn't have a full menu of food, but you can get all the treats that they have over here at 888 Cheese & Co. So we got some cheese curds, because we're in Wisconsin. Now, I don't know what the classic dip for cheese curds is. We always go ranch. From Wisconsin, you have to let us know what typically you dip cheese curds in. They have a pretty good representation of a fried cheese curd, and this one's absolutely beautiful. And look at this cheese. Yep, right there. That's what you want. And we go ranch. Ranch cheese curd. So we also got a sandwich from 888 Cheese & Co. 
Now they have grilled cheese and that's kind of what they specialize in. But we went with the roasted turkey, avocado, ranch, cheese, mm. bacon, sun-dried tomato bun. Honestly, this is a really soft bun. And it smells amazing. It smells like bacon and toasted bread and melted cheese. I wish they would invent 4D YouTube because then you can smell how delicious this food is. I guess you're just gonna have to drive around Lake Michigan and try yourself. All right, let's go right here. I love a good grilled cheese, but I'm glad we ordered this one. The, honestly, this bread is so soft. I mean, can you see how soft that the is? The bread looks great. It's like a pillow. <laughs> it's a sun-dried tomato bun. This is, that is a really good sandwich. Who knew Green Bay, Wisconsin, you're gonna get one of the best sandwiches of your life. Maybe people in Green Bay knew. All right, Adam really talked up the sandwich, so let's see. The bread really does look amazing. Mm. The bacon is so crispy. I was like, I don't even know how you get bacon to be that crispy. Fry it. I guess you fry it and you just throw it in a fryer. I don't know. And the turkey is really nice. It's like thick sliced turkey. It's really is a very good sandwich. We might have to get another one. Mm. I'd like to know where they get this bun and order a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't think that we can cross the border into Wisconsin without enjoying some cheese curds when we get here. Again, dipping it in ranch. Just doubling down on the calories. I mean, it's really like the perfect snack. What's better than cheese? Deep fried cheese. I'm glad that these aren't something that we eat in Illinois that much because mm -hmm. I would weigh a million pounds. They, they really stop at the border, don't they? They do. It's like some law. It's like it's a weird thing. Like, you get across the border, and we don't really do cheese curds down there. Mm -mm. Um, but makes it extra special every time we pop up here and get some. So the garage theme for this place is actually really funny when you think about it. Because if you're from the Midwest, garage beers are a thing. Everybody knows you got beers in the garage. And it's kind of a running joke that people like have a fridge in the garage just for extra drinks and extra beers. So our day here is winding down. We are in Milwaukee and we are at Estabrook Park. And here in the park, they have the Estabrook Beer Garden. So you can get a liter of beer, a warm pretzel, and sit outside and enjoy the park. I can't think of a better way to end our day here and to end our Lake Michigan circle tour. So right below the beer garden is this little waterfall on the river. Well, how Milwaukee is this? We're in a park drinking beer. And the cool part is there's a little bit of a waterfall behind us. It's a beautiful park and it's a nice day. We also got a giant pretzel. So the big pretzel comes with sweet mustard and obatsa cheese. I think that Milwaukee might be the big giant pretzel capital of the United States because I haven't been anywhere else that serves as many giant pretzels like Milwaukee does. Let's just rip this open. Oh. These are fresh baked every day at a local bakery. So 
We also have a liter beer. I get the darker beer. Madeline. The dunkle. The dunkle. The dunkle, which is darker. That's actually not the right word, but. That was the name of beer. Prost. <sighs> you know, the nice part of Milwaukee is I don't think it's ever been above 75 degrees here. <laughs> so your beer steak's cold. <laughs> <laughs> We're usually in Milwaukee when it's cold. It's not true. Midwest summers can get very hot. But from like September through May, I don't think it does get above 75. Keeps your beer cold. That's probably why Wisconsin has good beer. It's just cold all the time. You got to stay warm somehow. So let's dig into the first bowl. Mm. Beer. Also known as mustard. Oh my god, why do you keep saying beer? Because Stop I'm, saying beer. I'm in Wisconsin, that's all they do. Mustard. That's the sweet mustard. There's that obatsa cheese. Mm. Mm. I haven't been in Germany yet, but Milwaukee, tie me over until I get there. Adam got the big beer. I got the more manageable half liter beer here. Like Adam said, we've um, we've not been to Germany for Oktoberfest yet, but this is this is giving us beer garden vibes today. It's very lively on a Sunday afternoon. I'm gonna have some a pretzel and some cheese here. I seriously gained 10 pounds. Every time I cross the border into Wisconsin, when there's the food up here, it's just so good. Ooh, there's mustard. It kind of looks like honey. Be honey mustard. Oh, yeah. hey, sweet. That's good. I might like the mustard better than the cheese, which is kind of blasphemy to say up here. We destroyed the pretzel. Yeah. Not yet the beer. Mm. Pretzel, beer, cheese, sitting outside. So yeah, it's a pretty great way to end our circle tour here in Milwaukee. If you want to see more from our Great Lake adventures, click right here. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.